History is powered by class struggle, but also by two things, love and procreation. As we are all aware, things can get messy when more than two people are involved. Some of the most notorious affairs in history have been love triangles between powerful individuals, generating domestic tension and outlandish personal conversations. From ancient Rome to the French Ancien Regime, some love triangles have deeply changed the course of history. With this in mind, we decided to make this list. Rodrigo Hilbert became rather famous when he built a chapel to marry his sweetheart, but this pales in comparison to Henry VIII as he founded a new religion to marry his lover. Yet, prior to this, he was involved in one of those love triangles. The sides of this triangle were King Henry VIII, his wife Catherine of Aragon, and his mistress Anne Boleyn. Henry VIII virtually started an entirely new church to get rid of his first wife. Catherine of Aragon had originally married Arthur Tudor, Henry VIII's older brother, but he died soon after. So, the Spanish princess became Queen of England when she married Henry VIII. A few years older than her new husband, Catherine was a devotional and loving wife to Henry VIII, even in the midst of painful miscarriages, stillbirths, and her husband's several betrayals. But things changed when Henry fell in love with Catherine's lady-in-waiting, Anne Boleyn. Catherine had failed to give birth to a male heir, just a girl named Mary Tudor. Henry believed that only a male would keep the dynasty going and maintain the peace in England that had been settled by his father. On the other hand, Anne Boleyn wanted Henry VIII to marry her. She did not want to be just a commonplace affair. Henry asked for a divorce from the Pope, who rejected it. So Henry broke away from Rome and established the Church of England, partly because of his desire to get away from Catherine and marry his true love, Anne Boleyn. Well, she was, at least back then. As head of the church, he could divorce, which he promptly did. Henry married Anne, they bore the future Queen Elizabeth I, and the rest is history. Wallace Simpson is probably one of history's most celebrated modern women due to her involvement in one of the most shocking love triangles of the 20th century. Simpson was the reason King Edward VIII relinquished the throne and Queen Elizabeth II became queen years later. As Prince of Wales and heir apparent to the British throne, Edward VIII had many mistresses, but it was Wallace Simpson who won his heart the most. Unfortunately, he could not marry her because as the head of the Church of England, the king could not wed without a divorce. Technically, she was still married to the American Ernest Simpson. The royal family told Edward to marry anyone except Wallace, but the king only kept his eyes on her, especially after she left Ernest. Eventually, instead of doing his duty as King of England, he resolved to abdicate the throne and marry his mistress with only 20 guests present. His wife would be vilified for the rest of her life for manipulating a monarch. When reading about such stories, we can't help but think about how history could have been written differently if they hadn't happened. How much of our world would look different? How much of our culture and customs would change? For starters, the king had sympathy for the German leader in the 1930s. The life of King Louis XIV of France had many sweethearts, but two of the greatest were his longtime mistress, Madame de Montespan, and his last wife, who resembled a nun, Madame de Montenon. Louis' sister-in-law, Elizabeth Charlotte, called them two of the worst women in the world. But what did they do to earn such a reputation? Initially married to his cousin Maria Theresa of Spain, Louis, the top womanizing king in 17th century Europe, constantly cheated on her. His number one lady for decades was Françoise Athenaise, Marquis de Montspan. She was a greedy and ambitious noblewoman. She even had seven children with Louis and kept her spell on him for a long time, up until she was accused of having an association with witches and lost her relevance. Eventually, Louis's wife passed away and he became somewhat morally lost. He also grew tired of Montespan's temper and passion around this time. Accordingly, the king turned to Madame de Montenon, the governess of his children with Montespan. 
Louis fell in love with her quiet and pious nature. The two women became friends, but everything changed with the controversial poisoning affair in which Montespan was involved. Against the advice of his ministers, Louis made Montenon his mistress and immediately afterwards married her morganatically. This union remained a secret for 30 years. The first Brazilian emperor, Pedro de Alcantara, reigned from 1822 until his abdication in 1831. A key figure in the country's independence process, he was eternally etched in history when he proclaimed on September 7, 1822, the famous statement on the banks of the Iparanga River, independence or death. Throughout his life, Pedro I was widely known for his authoritarian, impulsive, temperamental, and of course, womanizing figure. Pedro I married the Archduchess Maria Leopoldina in 1817, with whom he had seven children. Although married, he was involved with several mistresses. Although married, he became involved with several lovers. The marriage did not start well, and as time went by, it only got worse. Pedro's extramarital affairs kept happening one after the other, as well as the bastard children. Despite this, he never gave Leopoldina a day off, who, ever pregnant, lived in seclusion and rest. The arrival of Domitila de Castro, the Marchioness of Santos, would shake the couple's life for good. She was one of his most notable lovers, ever since she got involved in many controversies, which led Pedro to lose much of his prestige. Pedro and Domitila engaged in frenzied passion. The affair transcended the bedchamber and spilled over into the prince's political and family life, as well as into his image inside and outside the country. Furthermore, Pedro officially recognized his child Isabel with Domitila and brought the bastard to live next to his offspring. Leopoldina, who felt humiliated, allowed her sorrow to show only in her correspondence. With deep grief and constant quarrels, Leopoldina's life gradually waned. In 1826, pregnant again, the woman was in poor health. Within days, she miscarried and died. But not before venting all her anger and resentment on Domitila. After her death, the population transformed the empress into a sort of heroine. On the other hand, the lover was made a villain. To find a new wife, Dom Pedro had to end his affair with Domitila. Cleopatra VII, Egypt's last Ptolemaic pharaoh, had many affairs, especially with Julius Caesar and his protege, Mark Antony. Her relationship with the latter terminated the Roman Republic and spawned the empire. Cleopatra landed in an extremely difficult situation when Octavia, wife of Mark Antony, denounced her husband's desertion to her brother, Octavius, who was Mark Antony's arch-rival, and later known as the first Roman Emperor Augustus. In 40 BC, Mark Antony and Octavius disputed Rome's leadership. To ease their relationship, Mark Antony married Octavian's sister, who even helped seal a treaty between the two. However, when Mark Antony went out on campaign and promptly resumed his affair with Cleopatra, including seeking a divorce from his wife, the peace was broken, and Octavius and his brother emerged as true political rivals to Cleopatra and Mark Antony. Octavius, clever by nature, pitted Rome against him, saying that he had deserted his wife and children for a foreigner, portraying him as an unpatriotic person who couldn't be bothered with the Republic's future. The feud between the two climaxed in the Battle of Actium, in which Octavian emerged as the first Roman Emperor Augustus. The lovers Cleopatra and Mark Antony eventually committed suicide. <laughs>